Right then, let's take you through our running order for the Junior Rotax final. On pole position, it's going to be Mateo Dodankovic, followed by Boluet on the front row. Kasper Schormans did win the race, but also got a five-second time penalty post-race, putting him down to third. He'll have Thomas Behrman alongside him on the front row. Boz Maximov and Cameron Nelson start on row three with Crick Norton, Taze Van Veek, Timo Jungling and Mika van der Pavik rounding out the top ten. Jungling also copped a five-second time penalty in the race. Uh, Kasper Schormans got a five-second penalty for shortcutting the track earlier on. Uh, Jungling got a push-to-pass five-second time penalty, as did multiple other drivers. Uh, Thomas Ingram Hill starts 11th head of Armand Hamilton with Tino Sidler, Taze Stevens, Knud Nielsen, Matthias Jarrup, Max Cuthbert, Olivia Jonkers, Vlad Tomachuk, and Max Sadursky rounding out the top 20. Ruben Verheyen, Freddy Ingram, Luca Brima, Sebastian Kosh, Mate Kobahidze, Philip Lenk, Archie Bustle, Laura Bubanova, Adam Eckstein, Jake Menton, Martin Lichner, Kenneth Anamokirka, Maxim Smith, uh, Kaz Tobin, and Callum Ghosh round out the 35 strong grid. At the moment, there's not much in it. Coming into this penultimate race of the season, it's about three points between the top two battling for the title. You make that 15, but revs rise. Are we ready? Lights are out for the final time for Junior Rotax this season. Leading the way into turn number one is Mateo Dankovic, this year's European junior, tro uh, junior champion. Boluet holding on to third at the moment. So, at the minute, it's going to be nip and tuck. The reason being is that places will change as the race progresses. The field makes its way. Oh, someone's brought... Oh, someone's gone into the tire barriers. That's the 2-2-1 that's just gone off. Archie... Oh, KR Sports Archie Buttle. There was someone uh, actually off at the same point as well. Archie Buttle gets the cart out from underneath uh, the barriers and manages to get back in. Restarts, off he goes. But at the minute, well, it's heating up at the front, isn't it, folks? Because look at the train at the front of the field. It's Radenkovic, Shormans, Loet, Behrman. Then add Maximov, Knorren, Jungling, Van der Pavert, Van Vyck, Nelson. That's your top ten. Armand Hamilton is just outside of the top ten. So this is where the numbers game comes into play, and that's why we've got a spreadsheet specifically created for this. A uh, little bit of uh, battling going into turn seven, bit of a bump from behind. Oh, it's two abreast. The oh, someone's gone grass tracking. S redress straight onto the circuit. Oh, dearie, dearie me. That is not exactly what you want happening there. The drivers now making their way through out of the final corner and leading the way, it is Kasper Schormans, followed by Boluet. Mateo Dodenkovic drops to P3. It's 
so for things to be for things to change the title now is separated by two points battle between the likes of the 245 the 286 that well you got the likes of the, the you've also got the likes of say for instance uh, Armand Hamilton Thais van Vijk uh, and then Mika van der Pavert who really hasn't shown been uh, part of the showcase this weekend he's had a very difficult time but at the moment the way things stand Casper Schormans is leading by two points but he's got to have a very very clean race if anything comes unstuck for the 240 that puts Bola Wett in prime championship contention along with getting the ticket bit of a squeeze there by Youngling on Thomas Behrman as the 272 of Crick Knoren gets passed by Mika van der Pavert from SP Motorsport. This is all gonna go down to the wire, folks. We still have 11 minutes and 45 seconds. This is not 13 minutes. This is a real endurance test. This is 15 minutes plus an additional lap. And with regards to that, you have to do tire conservation. You also have to pick your moments close on in wait and start building that momentum to then go for the move that could decide everything if Lewett makes a clean move and pulls away from Shawman's the title is his gap between first and second now two tenths Lewett I would say unless he's right on the rear bumper of the 240 from JJ Racing. He's better off staying where he is because even if he doesn't pick up the title, he will get the ticket to the grand finals. Mika van der Pavert hasn't had a good run, but in, uh, in this particular occasion, yeah, Mika van der Pavert's opportunity of qualifying for Team Netherlands won't happen here at the BNL Karting Series. Loet is exactly where he needs to be, but I know for a fact that he would love to take that title on the circuit. And he's right with Shawmans through turn 12. Out of the final corner, they are less than half a cart length. Now is the opportunity for the 224 from Belgium to go up the inside. He's waiting, he's waiting. He decides not to go for it. And that's a very, very good call. That is shrewd because we still have, we're a, fifth, we're a third of the way through this race. A third of the way. Loet is now putting the feelers out. And there are the senior Rotax drivers making their way onto the dummy grid. Ahead of their last race of the season. The title's going to go to the, down to the wire in that one. But into turn number nine. Redenkovic and Maximov again. Well, could they spoil the party? Radenkovic has showcased that he can do. Maximov is now in there. And he's, he might be the youngest of this quartet, but he's got a lot of fighting spirit. The 2-3-0 pulls round to the outside of turn number 12. And now the slipstream fight starts. And Radenkovic fires it up the inside, nearly clatters into the side of Bolouette. And Loet stays in second. Oh, how on earth did he hold on to that? I think Loet, uh, Loet just got through there. I, I'm not too sure if he used any of the runoff area. The angle can sometimes be quite deceptive from what I'm seeing. But Loet has kept himself in second position. Radenkovic is third. But loet has got to watch it. Radenkovic was, well, if that, unless it's Maximov. No, it's Maximov. Radenkovic is now fourth. So the fight now becomes a two-driver race. It's the drivers in first and second. Shawmans has been looking for his first title in continental Europe this year. Euro trophy didn't come to plan, but the BNL has been a bit more different. And now a few robust maneuvers happening with the likes of Mika van der Pavert getting through and is closing in on Thomas Behrman. Right behind him is uh, the 253, that's Cameron Nelson. 
And Youngling is dropping. Youngling is dropping. He's got Boaz Maximov right on his case. So now Radenkovic is in third position. That's 50 points for the young, uh, the young man from Belgium, who also is proud, along with his dad, of their Serbian heritage, which is where the name of uh, Radenkovic comes from. So, with now halfway past the timer counting down in this race, three tenths separating the top two. Seven tenths. Oh, dramas. That's Thomas Ingram Hill out of the race off of turn number 11. Oh, that's a real shame for Thomas. He's been battling all the way through the season. And that is just a real shame for him at that point. So six minutes and 45 seconds still to go. At the moment, Kasper Schomans is in prime position to take this year's title, following in the footsteps. Let's have a look at the, the honor roll. I'm gonna do a little bit of reminiscing. Tommy van der Stoys from 10th last year, coming into the final round, round one and won the thing. Kai Hillitz has won it. Mike van Voogt, the legend that is Joe Turney. Radenkovic now fires it up the inside, bumps over the curves through turn two and gets past Loet. But Loet is keeping calm and cool at this moment. So you look at the people, uh, as I was just saying before, Matej Radenkovic really interrupted me there. How dare you, Matej? Uh, Thomas Pining, current DTM runner in, with Porsche. Uh, Danny Kroos, uh, uh, San Shippers, Finn Goyman, Dave Blom. And also, the inaugural champion that year, in 2008, was a certain man doing Facebook Live, doing a DJ set, Dylan LaHaye, at the early hours of this morning. Yeah, I saw you. Now, oh, now that was Radenkovic round the, out, round the outside at turn 12. I haven't seen that since the days of Clayton Ravenscroft. Radenkovic just went for it, went round the outside, and now he's got the race lead. That just goes to show how quickly things can change. And now, what that means, Bolouet is fighting with Thomas Behrman. He needs to be with Kasper Schormans and start fighting him. But keep your eyes on Mika van der Pavert. Van der Pavert is closing in on Thomas Behrman. We've got four minutes and 45 seconds to go, plus one additional lap. So now that Van der Pavert is battling away with Behrman, Loet has managed to scarper away a little bit. He's got some breathing space between himself and the 259. And Loet again putting the feelers out. He's sweeping wide into turn number six on Kasper Schormans. And at this moment, it's one point between them. Send up the inside through into turn number eight, which turn number seven, which didn't really come to pass. I'm not too sure who that was, to be honest with you. But Louette is waiting. He's taking his time. He's not having to rush. But he's got to keep the pace up. It's hot. They're sweating, they're perspiring, they're expending energy. They're putting every single bit of emotional, physical and mental energy into this. And Louette just seems to be the one that has the measure of everything. We're now on to what is lap number 13 out of this race. And the top three were covered by 0.64 after that amount of laps. Armand Hamilton in 16th, the Hungarian with also, uh, also uh, Australian heritage there as well. 
uh, has put in the fastest lap of the race, 56.118. But the big thing now is Shawmans versus Loet. Now the move happens. Now that's second. Now that's Loet. And he's keeping Shawmans to try and keep him towards the outside. Shawmans gets the cut back. Oh, that's not what Loet needs for the title. Loet did not need Thomas Behrman going up the inside of him. Not what he needed at all. So Casper Shawmans. Now finds himself two points ahead, but Bolowet going brave. That's round the outside. There's Simo Jungling making it three wide. Loet made it through round the outside of turn six. That's one of the best moves I've seen round the outside of turn six. Onto the Yorapalan. Bolowet making it three wide, courtesy of Timo Jungling going to the other side of Thomas Behrman and made it stick. Now the hurry up starts. This is where Bolowet has to dig very, very deep and catch and pass Kasper Schormans. Coming up to the final 90 seconds. Loet is within three tenths of second place. That is exactly what Bolowet needed to do. It needed to be brave and it needed to be beautiful and it needed to be round the outside at turn six. And of all people he did it on, it was Thomas Behrman. Now into turn seven. The timer is counting down. Mateo Radenkovic will effectively secure himself third in the championship after this race. But what's going to happen now? Loet closing on Shawmans. Three wide into turn 10 at Cafe Corner. Shawmans still hanging on. We now go on to the penultimate lap of the season as Mateo Radenkovic goes through out of the final corner. Now, Loet has two laps to dig deep and to fight, Shawmans defends. Youngling and Behrman in the train. Maximov at the back of it, along with Cameron Nelson. Maximov stumbles coming out of turn number three, trying to overtake Thomas Behrman. But how close, as that's not what Bolowet needed. He did not need Timo Youngling going up the inside. This could be the moment that decides the title. Behrman through, Jungling through, Loet down to fifth. Timer now comes to its inevitable conclusion. It hits zero. That is it. One more lap. 1.36 kilometers remain. Mateo Dankovic is going to cap off the BNL Karting Series season in style. The last lap board of the season is shown, Bolowet back up to fourth. He's fighting with the likes of Maximov. Jungling in third. This is what Shawmans needed. Shawmans now is in second. He stays there and it's confirmed he takes the title. But Bolowet has been fighting tooth and nail. He's currently in P4, that's 48 points. Timo Jungling now up into third place as our race leader, Mateo Radenkovic, comes through into turn 10. And there's the man in second position. Radenkovic out of turn 11 for the final time. One more corner remains. Out of the final turn, Radenkovic wins the race. But Shawmans picks up the title. Keep your eyes peeled on P4. I think Bolowet has signed his allegiance to the Red Devils at the grand finals in Bahrain by finishing runner-up this season. And finally, he picks up a ticket to the grand finals. That's all provisional, pending any sporting and technical checks post-race, but I had my heart in my mouth. I make it 710 points, Casper Shawmans, 707 Bolowet, and rounding out the top three overall, this year's European Trophy, Euro Trophy champion, Mateja Radenkovic. Radenkovic wins by 3.6 seconds. Timo Jungling finishes in third behind uh, provisional champion at this moment. The reason why I say provisional, I don't want to cause problems. I said it's confirmed. 
and it got booted out. Let's say Mick Knowlton 2018 Wackersdorf Euro Trophy. That's all I'm saying on that one. Jungling uh, takes the ball away. So I think he finishes runner-up in the championship standings and he takes a ticket to the grand finals in juniors. That'll all be confirmed and ratified in due course for the presentation later on today. Boris Maximov takes a well-deserved fifth place at the end of that. Thomas Behrman in sixth, seventh. It was Crick Norden, Cameron Nelson, Tiz van Vyck, Mika van der Pavert, Olivia Jonkers, Armand Hamilton, Max Sadursky, Tino Sidler, Luca Brima. They complete the top 15. Martin Lichner, Knud Nielsen, Sebastian Koch, 